Thank you for joining us as we embark on an eye-opening journey through history and healthcare. In this David vs. Goliath story, Dr. Wilk takes on the American Medical Association, or the AMA, and charges against the Committee on Quackery, whose sole purpose was to quote, contain and eliminate chiropractic. Get ready to explore a pivotal moment that not only reshaped chiropractic care, but challenged the very foundations of healthcare itself. But first, don't forget to subscribe so that you can join us on these fascinating journeys. Chapter one, setting the stage, the rise of chiropractic care. To truly grasp the significance of the Wilk versus the American Medical Association trial, we need to step back in time and explore the intriguing history of chiropractic care, its founding principles, and the hurdles it encountered along the way. Chiropractic care as we know it today traces its origins back to 1895, when a doctor named D.D. Palmer made a groundbreaking discovery. He believed that the spinal misalignments, or what were termed as subluxations, could interfere with the body's innate ability to heal itself. Dr. Palmer's theory challenged conventional medical wisdom, which primarily relied on drugs and surgeries to treat illnesses. He asserted that the nervous system played a central role in maintaining health and spinal adjustments were the key to unlocking the body's innate healing power. Early chiropractors began to care for their patients by detecting these vertebral subluxations and adjusting them, aiming to correct subluxations and promote overall well-being. This marked the birth of chiropractic care as a distinct healing art. However, the emergence of chiropractic care as a new healthcare profession was met with both curiosity and skepticism from the medical establishment. Medical doctors and established medical organizations were wary of this innovative approach. They questioned the scientific basis of chiropractic care and expressed concerns about patient safety. This skepticism led to a series of challenges that chiropractic care had to overcome, setting the stage for the eventual conflict that would lead to the Wilk vs. AMA trial. Early chiropractors faced legal challenges and even persecutions in some cases. They were accused of practicing medicine without a license, and legal battles erupted over their right to provide care. Many chiropractors were jailed for practicing chiropractic during this time, including the most jailed chiropractor, Dr. Herbert Reaver, and a total of 450 other chiropractors that were jailed in just one year at the peak of this controversy. Now, many of those chiropractors continued to see their patients while they were in jail. These legal battles were significant precursors to the larger conflict between chiropractors and the American Medical Association, or the AMA which sought to maintain its dominance in the healthcare landscape. With this historic backdrop in mind, you can better appreciate the tensions and conflicts that eventually led to the Wilk vs. AMA trial. Chapter two, the conflict. AMA's actions against chiropractors. The conflict between chiropractors and the AMA came to a head in the 20th century. The AMA viewed chiropractic care as a threat to its dominance in the healthcare field. This conflict escalated with allegations of the conspiracy by the AMA to suppress chiropractic care. The Wilk vs. AMA trial was a turning point. Here are some key actions taken by the AMA against chiropractors. Number one, boycott and restriction of referrals. The AMA actively discouraged its members, which included medical doctors, from referring patients to chiropractors. This boycott aimed to limit the number of patients seeking chiropractic care. The AMA's publications contain statements discouraging referrals to chiropractors, suggesting that medical doctors should avoid collaborating with them. Number two, defamatory campaigns. The AMA launched a defamatory campaign against chiropractors, spreading false and derogatory information about the chiropractic profession. This campaign aimed to tarnish the reputation of chiropractors and their methods. And to this day, it still has an impact. Some of these defamatory statements claimed that chiropractic care was unsafe, unrightly claiming that chiropractors killed people, or that chiropractors lacked proper training. Number three, the AMA's influence on medical schools. The AMA sought to influence medical schools and universities to restrict or eliminate any education or coursework related to chiropractic care. This action aimed to limit the number of individuals pursuing the chiropractic education. 
The AMA's influence extended to academic institutions, affecting the availability of chiropractic education. Number four, opposition to licensure. The AMA lobbied against the licensure of chiropractors in various states, attempting to hinder their legal recognition as healthcare professionals. This opposition to licensure created legal hurdles for chiropractors further complicating their practice. Chapter three, the trial, proving the conspiracy. The Wilk vs. AMA trial was the culmination of years of struggle and a critical turning point in the battle for chiropractic recognition. The heart of the trial revolved around the plaintiff's efforts to prove that the AMA and other medical associations had indeed conspired against chiropractors. The plaintiffs, led by Dr. Chester A. Wilk and several other chiropractors, embarked on a harrowing journey to substantiate their claims. They presented an array of compelling evidence to the court. Central to their case were the internal AMA documents and communications. These documents, some of which were discovered during the trial, revealed explicit discussions and strategies to undermine chiropractic care. These internal memos and communications contain statements expressing the intent to discredit chiropractors and limit their influence in healthcare. This is when the discovery of the American Medical Association's Committee of Quackery, which whole and sole purpose was to quote, contain and eliminate chiropractic. The plaintiffs also called former AMA officials as witnesses who testified about the AMA's policies and practices during their tenure. These testimonies provided first-hand accounts of the AMA's efforts to suppress chiropractic and its attempts to dissuade medical doctors from collaborating with chiropractors. The trial featured evidence showing that the AMA actively encouraged its members, including medical doctors, to boycott and avoid any association with chiropractors. This strategy aimed to restrict patient referrals to chiropractic care. Quotes from AMA publications and statements from medical professionals underscored this concerted effort to isolate chiropractors. The plaintiffs presented evidence of the AMA's defamatory campaigns against chiropractors. This campaign included spreading false and negative information about chiropractic care and practitioners. The defamatory materials portrayed chiropractic care as unscientific and unsafe, further damaging the profession's reputation. Chapter four the impact shaping chiropractic's future. The weight of this evidence, coupled with the extensive legal arguments, led to a historic verdict in 1987. The court found that the AMA and other medical organizations had indeed engaged in a conspiracy against chiropractic care. This landmark decision prohibited the AMA from continuing its anti-competitive practices and vindicated chiropractors in the long-standing battle for recognition and legitimacy. The trial's verdict had several significant implications. Perhaps the most immediate and enduring impact was the enhanced legitimacy of chiropractic care. The trial exposed the AMA's efforts to discredit chiropractors and in so doing, elevated the chiropractic care to a recognized and respected healthcare discipline. This newfound recognition opened doors for chiropractors to collaborate more openly with other healthcare professionals. Another result is that the antitrust precedent, the trial set a crucial legal precedent in the realm of antitrust laws in healthcare. It reinforced the idea that no single professional organization or establishment should engage in anti-competitive practices to suppress competition in healthcare. This precedent has implications far beyond chiropractic care, serving as a reminder of the importance of fair competition in healthcare markets. Also, improved relations. The trial played a pivotal role in mending the strained relationship between chiropractors and medical professionals. Some doctors previously discouraged from referring patients to chiropractors began to do so more openly. Collaboration between chiropractors and medical doctors became more commonplace, benefiting patients who could now access a broader range of healthcare options. The trial also spurred changes in the chiropractic education. Chiropractic colleges and institutions adapted their curriculum to meet evolving healthcare standards and ensure that chiropractors were well prepared for a collaborative healthcare environment. These reforms ensured that chiropractors received comprehensive training and were better equipped to work with other practitioners. And finally, the ongoing debate. While the trial resolved many issues, debates around the effectiveness and scope of chiropractic care continue to this day. 
However, this trial marked a significant turning point in the recognition of chiropractic care as a legitimate healthcare profession. The trial's impact continues to be felt and the chiropractic profession has made strides to continue to integrate with mainstream healthcare while still being a standalone practice. In conclusion, the Wilk vs. AMA trial was not merely a legal battle, but a transformative event in the history of chiropractic care. It vindicated chiropractors, strengthened their position within the healthcare system, and emphasized the importance of fair competition in healthcare markets. And now you know how Dr. Wilk took on the Goliath AMA and overcame the odds and allowing for chiropractic professionals to care for individuals today. Thank you for joining us on this journey through chiropractic healthcare. I'm Dr. Kyle Murray here with AtlasBrainspine.com. And please take a moment to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you for your time. And remember, when you restore your brain, you will truly begin to heal your pain. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next video.